Hey there. Welcome to Lick of the Week. Week number four of our 52-week series exploring iconic jazz phrases. And without further ado, here's the Lick of the Week. That lick was taught to me by Tim Hagens, Blue Note jazz artist, I guess famous for working in the Maria Schneider Orchestra in good old New York City. Uh, he was my teacher for a minute while I was at NYU. He showed me lots of great stuff. And we'll get into how to analyze this so it's easier to memorize and learn in all 12 keys in just a second. Always want to take this opportunity to thank our Patreon supporters and to you too for tuning in. And if you like what you're hearing, you can click like and subscribe and get these delivered to you. Every week you'll know when they're coming up. So thank you very much for tuning in. All right, so let's break it down. What's going on in this lick? We're in the key of F and we see a one, six, two, five, one progression. F to D7 to G minor to C7, flat nine, back to F. And this, uh, this is called a turnaround. It's the kind of phrase that you'd see at the end of a song or at the end of an A section maybe in F that's gonna take you back to the top of the tune if the tune starts on F. Or in rhythm changes, these turnarounds are happening a lot. The first uh, two bars is this, the second, the third and fourth bar is also this. It happens over and over again in rhythm changes. And these are compressed little jazz units of harmony. Uh, overall though, it's not really going anywhere, it's just coming back to itself. But inside of that, we can, we can learn a lot about how to make these kind of phrases interesting. So let's break it down in these two beat segments, chord by chord. All right, on the F chord, we have, it's diatonic. It's three, one, two, three. On the sixth chord, the D7 chord, it goes to the major third, F sharp, and then jumps up to the E flat, which is the flat nine. And that motion, if you will, of going from the minor third, the F natural, to the major third, F sharp, up to the flat nine is very common in bebop language. It's kind of one of the main ways to get to these tension notes. Uh, so yeah. And then if you notice, there's a half step in the opposite. So we have this big leap up, and then there's a stepwise motion in the opposite direction. Uh, yeah. So that's how we get to that flat nine on the D. And from there, we just walk down diatonically through the G minor chord. And then when we get to the five chord, the C7, uh, if we just take the ornamentation out for a second, we have so going three, two, and then flat three, flat two, and then landing on the, uh, the, the note, which is the five of the F of the C. So yeah, that pattern there is also pretty common in bebop language. Going from the major third to the nine to the sharp nine, flat nine. And you can even extend that. Sometimes you see this. Um, yeah, so Tim Hagen's in a very short little two bar phrase is giving us two very important elements of jazz language, this idea of skipping up to a color tone and then stepwise in the opposite direction from where we skip to. And uh, then this idea of uh, this little chromatic idea going from major third to the nine to the sharp nine flat nine on a dominant seven chord. So there you go. Hopefully these will, these little, um, this analysis will help you memorize it and help you transpose it into all 12 keys. The more you can learn it and get it under your fingers, the more I'm sure it'll crop up in your improvisations and you'll begin to, what's the word, internalize this language of jazz and this, uh, well, in this case, bebop language. Thanks for paying attention and tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Take it easy.